as you're sitting watching this on Sunday night, I'll probably be in a beer tent at Shrewsbury at the uh, annual steam rally down there at Onslow Park. I'm um, down there with Richard and the wife uh, camping, and we've got the DJ steam wagon down there. So if you're at Shrewsbury or Onslow Park tomorrow, pop in and see us, come and say hello, because I'm certainly doing bait, and it will be great to meet you. I've been asked by a friend if I can cast one of them using that as a pattern. It is possible. He only wants one dole, any more than one, I would have made a pattern for it. Now what I'll need to do is fill all these holes in, I'll use body filler, fill that hole in as well, give it all a nice coat of body filler and then sand it smooth. It's up an old ship, it's something to do with the Maritime Museum, so once again I'll be making something there's a fair chance of surviving. So we'll mix some body filler up, get it all filled up and sand it ready and have a good to produce that. Just bought this tiller body for that, and when I open it, that's what you get. Why I put it in a tin, it's only unbelievable. Dear me. Basically fill the holes up first and then we can play with it later, sand it back to shape. Only certainly get here, you get variety. You gotta know where to leave the stuff alone. I think now was the time to leave it alone. I've actually got this table set just off 90 degrees, so it's gonna grind a draft onto the pattern. Put a tape around the pattern. So if you look down the pattern now, it's actually got a tape on that way. All it wants to know is a little bit more sanding and basically that's ready to ready to mould. Just a simple case now of smoothing things off by hand. The filler sands off quite nicely. All the corners are nicely rounded off. Right, we've made the original part of a pattern simply by covering it in body filler and sanding it nice and smooth. And it has got plenty of tape around that's draft angle so it will come out of the, the sand, hopefully. I want to put a, a board down there, the box goes on there. The reason for the board is probably when I pick up the sand box, the box filled with sand, that'll fall out. Well, with the board on, we can pull it by the sides. The box is a little bit big, but it's better too big as too little. Gives you plenty of room to, to play with gating and whatnot. That's going to go in there like that. Next thing we need to put in is some releasing powder, part and sand. This just stops the sand from sticking. 
to the pattern and from sticking to the other half of the box when we come to, to ram it up. This box is actually called a flask, it's in two parts. The coop and drag, this is the drag part, the bottom part, and the coop part goes on the top. Right, plenty of part and dust in there. Normally I would riddle fine sand across there, but I don't know where my riddle is, so I just have to put ordinary sand in. But it is quite quite clean anyway. Normally I just work out of this box with the sand, but the sand that's in there is very dry and I've actually mixed enough sand up on a temp or enough sand just purely and simply to do this one job. Right, the sand must be rammed down, packed nice and firmly around the around the pattern, especially in the corners of the boxes. that the sand's nicely packed around the edges of the pattern so you're going to clean break when you take the pattern out a lot of people ask what sort of sand it is this sand's actually called Mansfield Red because it, when you get it it's red coloured and it comes from Mansfield it just has the right amount of clay in it naturally to make a really good molten sand. The sand's mixed with water, which is tempered with water, to get it into the state it is now, which is basically if you squeeze a bit like that, it takes the imprint of your hand and it breaks nice and clean. If you get it too wet, you end up with a steam explosion. If it's too dry, it won't take the shape, it'll fall apart. It's just experience how much water you put into the sand. Right, I'm starting to get a So that's the bottom half of the world, all rammed up. A little bit more in there. Okay, let's just straighten it off so it's nice and level. A strick of it, as I call it, or they used to call it. So it's nice and level. Now we need to turn this over. A bit clean up first, I think. So if I just pick that box up, I'm pretty sure the pattern would fall out. So I need to use this little piece of plywood underneath just to keep the pattern held in like that bastard right so there you have your pattern now embedded in the sand right the top half of the box goes on or the, the coop Pins keep it lined up. Yep. It has got paint marks on the back, I was just making sure. Right, next, more pot and powder.
Right, next we need a hole to pour the metal into, which is called a sprue. I'm going to have it across here somewhere like that. Because I've got plenty of room in the box to play. And then we need a riser, which forms a reserve of hot metal to feed the mould. We'll have that there. And then we'll dig a channel between the two later on. So now we need to backfill this with sand, drop it all down again. Once you get a, a bit of sand stabilised around the, the tube, it's not too bad. Right, they're starting to get a hold now. Very labour intensive job. This people think you just poke a hole in the sand and pour a bit of hot metal in, it's not quite as simple as that. Right, so we've run the box up right at the top. Need to put some vent holes in the sand just to keep it. porous so that any gas and steam can escape just like that and we'll take these out now Any sand that falls down the outer, sort out later. This one here, which is the, the sprue where this metal goes in, I had to put an extension into it because it wasn't long enough. So, what we'll do is we'll dig a basin, and that's heavy, it's basically full of wet sand, so it's probably as heavy as a big block of stone. Okay, so far so good. I've got a load of old mould as tools given. Uh, somebody sent them in for us. These have actually been cast in bronze. Um, somebody's used these to make a living casting or mould making or whatever you want to call it. And I'm more than happy to use them. Right, so the metal comes down here. We need to form a basin. So any shite or dross gets caught in there. I 
that should about do that looks good right finally we need to be able to get the metal from the riser into the actual port that's called a gate nice big wide gate because there's quite a lot of metal got to go through there and we don't want it cooling off and freezing up Yeah, I'll trim that up once I get the, the pattern out. It's not going to be too bad. Now we're going to get the pattern out, which is always a, a phone port. What we'll do is we gently wrap the pattern till it starts to move like that just loosen it in the sand this is where all your work will go tits up I did drill on top a little hole in there for a 5mm bullet just to help us lift it out right here we'll go up steady hand that's pretty good that's not bad just tidy up the edges here any loose bits of sand need to be removed because they'll just get washed in that's pretty good actually right you don't use an airline to blow it off because it'll go everywhere this is what I use just to set a bit of roof off blowing up a camping bed just to blow away any loose grains of sand right that looks pretty good hot metal down there into the reservoir throw the runner into the gate into the job and hopefully we'll get a good result that looks pretty good as well now you can see on the camera um, you can see there that's where the pattern is so what I'm going to do is put a couple of vent holes right through just to make sure that any steam and gas can get out and put three in Right. So we could actually cut some out of there and make the gear big out of gear on the top, which wouldn't be a bad idea. Just like that, just to make sure we do get plenty of metal feeding in there when it starts to cool down. Right, pretty good. Now we need to put the top back on the bottom, which is always another part. There's a, a possibility of a complete disaster. But this is heavy and my arms are tired. Right. Oh, come on, you bastard. Oh, come on. That looks still alright. Come on, John. Right. 
Okie dokie. So we're ready now to light the furnace, pour some metal in, and then that's the fun bit is up in the boxes. Right at the moment, I'm going to go up and it's pretty well cooled now. That's where we pulled the metal in, the sprue, and that's the hot riser. You can see how it's shrunk down. Hopefully as the metal has been pulled back into the into the void of the casting as it cooled down. Anyway, we'll go up and see what sort of results of managed to get. First thought, it looks pretty good. Right, you can see exactly how it's worked here. That's where the molten metals come down into there. Any shade work is stopped in there. It's come along the runner. And that's the, the hot riser up there. And it's gone through the gate and into the into the void left by the pattern. This looks quite good. Nice and clean. Right, we'll see if we can get it out of there. Have a better look at it. See where I put the three ventures in, how flow the metal is, it's actually risen up those as well. bit of shrinkage there but nothing to, nothing to worry about. Your bell. Once again it's just time to see you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you haven't done so please subscribe. I'm up to 91,000 now and it'll be really nice for a mechanic if pisses about to get to 100,000. Anyway thanks for watching.